require an elevator to reach the second floor, which houses world language and art classrooms. Our current elevator is not ADA compliant. It is too small for wheelchairs to be turned around to face the door or even to allow more than two or three people to fit at the same time. Additionally, our elevator is very old and malfunctions frequently. The age of the equipment makes finding the appropriate parts difficult and repairs often take a long time. When the elevator is not operating, our students with disabilities are unable to access core academic classes. PPT Conference Room. There are over 250 PPTs held at Farmington High School each year. On average, these meetings require the attendance of between 10 to 14 stakeholders. Our current PPT conference room cannot accommodate these meetings in a comfortable or professional way. Counselor Meeting Room. Over 120 college representatives come to Farmington High School each year. Additionally, over 200 504 and other parent meetings are held annually. This is the only meeting space available to our counseling department. This single small space is inadequate to allow for the number of meetings that need to be scheduled each day. Former Culinary Arts, now Special Education. We no longer have a culinary arts program at Farmington High School because the main kitchen space was not ADA compliant and the classroom space needed to be rededicated to the special education program. This classroom is incredibly small and insufficient for those student needs as well. The remainder of our special education program is housed in a very small suite. Additionally, our special education department leader's office is currently housed in a small space that used to be home to the cafeteria catering liaison. Need number two, security compliance. There are 23 separate entry points at Farmington High School. Additionally, there are sightline issues, challenges in separating the high school boundary to public access points, inadequate lighting inside and outside of the building, and a very challenging overall orientation. The current parking lot configuration does not provide for adequate parking or clear walking pathways, which is also a safety concern. This poses challenges to meet the current standards for school safety. Need number three, sprawling building layout major hallway intersections. During a four minute passing period, almost 1,300 students move throughout our hallways. Intersections like this one are traditionally overcrowded. The overcrowding produces spaces that are chaotic, difficult to monitor, and potentially dangerous. Several students have expressed the anxiety they feel when trying to navigate hallway spaces such as this one. Art in world language. The remote second and third floors of the original 1928 building currently house the world language and art departments. These classrooms are incredibly small, cramped, and often get very hot in the warmer months and incredibly cold in the winter. There is little space for storage and oftentimes hallways are cluttered with completed or in process work. Additionally, these spaces are only handicap accessible via our challenging elevator that we discussed earlier. Need number four, educational programming. Cafeteria. Our cafeteria is not able to accommodate the size of our current student body. Four lunch waves must be organized, the first beginning before 10 a.m., which is when food can legally be served here in Connecticut. Thus, those students are not only scheduled for lunch at 9.50 in the morning, but they must also get their food and eat it in under 30 minutes. This is difficult with the number of students assigned to each lunch wave. The cafeteria is also used for study halls in the beginning and end of the day because there is insufficient classroom space. At times, nearly 200 students are assigned to a cafeteria study hall. This is hardly an environment conducive to student academic achievement and can be challenging to meet all student needs. Auditorium. The auditorium at Farmington High School, like many of our larger spaces, is an inadequate size to serve the needs of our community. Ideally, a school auditorium could accommodate at least half of the student population. Ours currently holds less than one third. 
Additionally, the space is not ADA compliant and features unbroken rows of approximately 570 seats. This arrangement is problematic for large crowds as entering and exiting rows is difficult and distracting. Finally, poor acoustics and mediocre lighting hinder the capabilities for educational and community programming. Tutorial rooms. We also lack the space for student academic support programs, such as English tutorial run by our student writing fellows. The current English tutorial space only allows one or two students to work with a tutor at a time and has been relegated to a small space under the stairs in the library. Conventional classrooms. The overcrowding we face at Farmington High School is experienced daily in our conventional classroom. Every classroom is occupied every period of the day, making it very difficult to hold planning meetings, meet with small groups of students, or host special programs. The classrooms face a myriad of problems, including wide and uncomfortable temperature fluctuations, leaks, and aging equipment. Amphitheater. The severe lack of space we face at Farmington High School is evident in rooms such as our amphitheater. Although it was originally designed for special events and meetings, it must now be used every period of the day for classes and study halls. Applied Arts. In applied arts classes, students work with powerful tools and sharp objects. This classroom is far too small for this work, which requires sufficient space to ensure student safety. Music rooms. Much of our school was built when our enrollment was 800 students. Farmington High School now enrolls approximately 1,300 students. Our music room is a perfect example of the strain that over-enrollment can put on a program. This space is too small for the number of students who attend music classes. Students often have to practice in hallways and stairwells. There is also insufficient storage for instruments and other equipment. Most importantly, it is not ADA compliant or handicap accessible. Gymnasiums. Our old gym is too small to be able to host most athletic events. Therefore, it is most often used for storage, small practices, and some health physical education classes. Our main gymnasium is not ADA compliant or handicap accessible when the bleachers are pulled out. There is no air conditioning, so it is often oppressively hot during events. Locker rooms. Most of our locker rooms are original to the 1954 renovation. The space is cramped and the lockers are too small to fit most bags and equipment. This means that many student athletes leave their personal items unsecured in this space. Additionally, our boys' showers had to be eliminated to add additional lockers, yet we can still not accommodate all students. Business Classroom Despite the number of students who enroll in our business classes and who intend to pursue business programs in their post-secondary education, we only have one business classroom at Farmington High School. This is not enough to keep up with the increasing enrollment in advancing technology. Data Center Technology is at the center of 21st century teaching and learning. Yet our entire data center has been forced into a former classroom. This space is too small for the equipment and staff needed to support all of our building and district technology needs. Need number five, energy efficiency. Bathrooms. The number, size, location, and condition of student bathrooms is also a major problem we face at Farmington High School. There are insufficient facilities for students to use and their poor condition often leads to extended periods of repair during which they are inaccessible. The outdated sewage lines have even required the main hallways to be dug up several times in order to allow the bathrooms to function. Moisture problem in math classrooms. Loud and distracting dehumidifiers are present in most of our math classrooms because of a moisture problem in this part of the building. This is merely one example of a structural issue that detracts from student learning. Science labs. Due to a lack of space, our science labs must also function as classrooms and workspaces. There is also insufficient storage for scientific chemicals and equipment. This can present a safety issue for our students and teachers. 
Please join together with us to develop a comprehensive solution to the significant needs of our high school facility by visiting our website, attending meetings, and becoming a partner in addressing the comprehensive needs of the FHS facility. Farmington High School values being one school, one community, one us. Thank you for touring our building in this virtual setup. feedback or comments that anyone would want to make um, so that we could get back to Scott. This would go on the website. It would be sent out uh, to parents and to the community. I think it's great. Yeah, I, I would like to share my comments too. Um, I find the music a little distracting. Uh, it feels a little too upbeat. Uh, and happy. Uh, I think the content is good in terms of what Scott is saying and most of the videos I think are good because they make the point. But for some reason, for me personally, that there's a disconnect with the music. Um, as I say, most of the videos are really good, especially those that illustrate the crowded conditions. Um, however, the amphitheater video does not convince me it's overcrowded. It looks like it's, you've got a lot of room in there. Um, and unfortunately- The video the was taken this year and we're in hybrid, so we only have half the population. Last year, it would definitely demonstrate that we were overcrowded, but I, yeah, you're right. You so I, if, it doesn't, if, it, if it doesn't add to the argument, I would seriously consider okay. cutting it. Um, okay because it might, it might dilute the message. And I had a similar feeling about the music rooms in the gymnasium because they're empty. Uh, and I hate, I hate to have you redo them. It may be just simply a matter of dropping it out. The whole video clip is quite long. Um, but overall, I think, I think the quality of most of it is really good, really good. This is, this is, oh, I'm sorry, Richard, were you done? No, no. yes, I'm finished. Um, and I, I, I can see what you say about the music. I think we need some music. It's just, it, it, music can add. But the one thing that I, that I was wondering about watching it was the clips probably somewhere, somewhere taken, not from this year because of the lack of mask wearing. And there were some clips where the kids are not. So if this, if this video went out now, would we be put in a position where parents would say, well, was this just taken? The kids aren't wearing masks or I just would want to be sure, um, you know, that that might not trigger some anxiety with, with the community. Well, we could maybe start with like a little statement saying that most of the video was taken last year because as you remember we had been in the process of creating this video when we went out and so we had started it but then we went out full remote and we weren't able to complete it until this year i think we need some sort of a disclaimer because there are quite a few um, um quite a few videos with with students not wearing masks. Anything else? What do you think about the length of it? I, I find it long. Um, I, I, I didn't time it, so I don't know what the length of it is. I'm not sure anyone. It was like 11 minutes, I think it said. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a long video. Almost 12, Almost 12 minutes. So is it possible to break it up into mini videos, shorter snippets, um, so that people can click on, let's say, science room or click on music and see the students playing in the hallway? I thought that part of the music was great. They're playing in the hallway. Um, rather than having to uh, watch the entire thing, um, just a thought. Mm. 
Is Scott going to be able to join us, Kathy or Kat? Uh, I think I think he plans to. I think he planned to on his phone because he's at um, senior. I think it's soccer. soccer. Yeah, mm -hmm. soccer. Um, I understand. This is this is a extremely challenging time to meet. But who who's going to be getting the feedback to him? I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> I um I I know. I think in the link that he sent to us, Devin, I think Scott even said that Evan is working on breaking this up already. So I have yeah. a few questions. Go ahead, Wendy. Okay, I just had a few questions and um, just a few mi minor, maybe some all minor details. So um, definitely the applied arts, this is coming from my CTE hat, um, tech ed teacher, supervisor, but I think with that lab, we just want to make sure that things are compliant with the tools and the way things are set up because that's very important with like OSHA safety. So I, it was kind of quick glancing through with the Electrothon you know, vehicle and the, the bandsaw and stuff, but I think someone might just want to double check to make sure that things are OSHA safe with that. Um, I definitely do agree with the crowded hallways, not even just with the mask, but the amount of people that were in the hallways close together that, that disclaimer definitely needs to go out that that was taken before pre-COVID. Um, and then I, I thought it was long. I do agree with that. And um, I, there was a mention in the beginning. I know it's a little small detail, but I'm just looking at it from an outside perspective, but the special ed offices, I thought that was good. But when it came down to like the special, it was the supervisor of special ed, was at her office of talking about that space. I think it, this needs to be more about the kids. And that wasn't as relevant to me personally. Um, I thought that was, if you are looking to cut things out to make it shorter, I mean, really looking at from the outside perspective, it, it has to be about the kids and what the kids, you know, building this for their experience. And I, just a small detail. Thank you. Anything else? This is really helpful. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Marcus raised his hand. Um, we just want to let him unmute. Marcus, are you there? I am. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the video I thought was pretty comprehensive. Um, I will agree with Richard. It seems a little long, um, and so you start to wander a little bit. So shortening it might be good if we could. There are a couple things up front, too, that were acronyms that are not particularly well known amongst a lot of the community. Like I think Scott mentioned PPT. He said para meeting 504. Um, I, I, I am familiar with this project and I don't even know what those things mean. So it might be good to try to spell those things out or if they're not that important to, to leave them out, but you don't want to, you don't want people guessing what we're talking about, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the other, the other thing, the, when you're talking about the auditorium and, the, um, I think, I think Scott used the phrase broken rows or unbroken rows and, um, I think I know what he means by that, but it's a little confusing. Um, I think it's like there's no center aisle, so it's like you have to, if you want to be in the middle of uh, the row, you have to start on one end and go all the way in. I just didn't know if there was a better way to um, to phrase that or not. I mean, that's a that's a pretty minor detail, so I'm not worried about that. But it, it was uh, the the phrase "unbroken rows" kind of caught me funny. Yeah, it's called continental ceiling ceiling seating. Sorry, continental seating. Oh. But that's going to confuse people even more. I guess I got that. <laughs> lack of a lack of a center aisle probably is the best. Yeah. Best yeah. description. Yeah, that caught me too, Marcus. And I think um, because when I hear the word "broken" when we're talking about seating in the auditorium, I think about all the broken seats. <laughs> right, and that's where, <laughs> that's where in the, and then the my, video that's you can see where, some of them. And we didn't talk about broken seats, but maybe that's a minor detail compared to the broader scope that he was talking about in the auditorium. Yeah. Yeah, we, we used to actually buy them from junkyards, the seats, and now we can't find them. Believe it or not, some people collect those. <laughs> so we were purchasing them to replace the broken seats, and now we just can't find them anywhere. So now we just use folding chairs. Right. I remember that was Pam, one of Pam Fisher's explanations yeah. all the time, and, and please, of, you know, to demonstrate how, how difficult it was to keep that auditorium up at this point. I know we don't always like to show bathrooms on 
film, but I think that was a part of the other tour. And I know I've been in the bathroom near the auditorium and the gymnasium with people from out of town and they kind of go, whoa, because you're like going back to the 60s with the yellow tile. And I don't know if that demonstrates just if it gives people a visual as to how outdated and, and small. I mean, there's a space issue too and accessibility. But again, they don't always translate very well on film. So I could see if you were avoiding the bathrooms purposefully. So I actually had one more question I forgot to ask, but I just have to make a statement. I went to Farmington High School, so you just brought me down memory lane with that. And kind of what Beth was saying, it hasn't really changed much. And that was like over 20 years ago. So I, I definitely can relate to the un, the dated, um, just being, yeah, I felt like being back in high school. Um, but my question is moving forward, and I see it says video tour and other videos, is there going to be another video kind of capturing what this new design plan, like renderings and tours of that? Because for me, I'm excited to see that. And I think that would drive more people and give them more motivated to go out there and vote and say, yeah, we want this. And I, um, I think we kind of know what issues that we have, but I'm excited to see what potential we have. So I'm just asking about that video or if that's on the table. I think that's what those side-by-side um, -side pictures that we have kind of on the, um, oh, it's, yeah, it's a update on the agenda. It's not necessarily a video, but it probably could be presented in a video format, but we've talked for quite a while now about doing side-by-side -side where we're comparing different sections of the school with what a new renovation or a new school would look like in those areas, whether it's the auditorium, the hallways, library, cafeteria. And I think to get to your point about being positive about what we're looking for mm -hmm. and what the potential is, right, with Farmington High School and now, comparing those. But it was more of a side-by-side. -side. We talked about doing it as a side-by-side -side comparison for a visual. Would it be possible to get renderings or like walk-ins of any renderings of the building? It is possible, um, but I thought also uh, actual photos of other buildings, um, contemporary buildings or uh, new buildings that best contrast with your existing spaces would also be effective. E even though, I mean, yeah, we could do renderings, but rendering sometimes doesn't, don't tell the whole story because sometimes you need a photograph of a, a modern high school classroom and compare that to an existing uh, photo would be even better, I, I think, actual rooms that are built. Um, and, you mean, can and you can create the illusion of a video with stills using, you know, the Ken Burns technique with um, images coming and going. So you can, you can, you can do a video-like effect, but uh, the first step is to collect the material, the actual still photos of existing and, and new. I liked um, having Scott kind of do the voiceover. So I could see like if we did do this side by side and, and Scott was kind of narrating it, it would be helpful kind of guiding, um, you know, the viewer through this is what we have now <laughs> and this is what it could be. Um, given our plan. So I, I like the idea of giving people something to look forward to and hope we kind of talked about that a little bit when we were uh, talking to Tall Timbers. You know, we want to give our community hope and, you know, this is a community project for the future for our kids and our, you know, uh, throughout Farmington. So I like the idea of like, okay, so this is what it looks like and this is what it could be uh, if this project were to pass. kind of goes right into our next agenda item. So I've already given Scott the feedback he's working on. <laughs> he said that they're already working on um, kind of putting it, uh, the video into segments rather than one long video, but I'm really happy with the feedback that the committee is, has provided. So uh, then we the side-by-side, -side, we really, I don't know where we are on the status of our side-by-side. -side. Um, I don't know. This is me. This is me, Kathy, and I, I clearly am not 
holding up my end of the bargain on this particular item. Um, so I don't know, is there anybody who's willing to help out with this? So I know so, you have Richard too, but anybody else in the committee too? Yeah, so I have a suggestion about that because um, um, it may be uh, better to start with a collection of images of the future and then go back to the existing school to take a shot of an existing condition that sort of is a good match. So that if you have a shot of an, a proposed, either it's a, it's a rendering that we create or it's an actual classroom, a modern classroom, then you try to take another shot of the existing, of an existing classroom from the same kind of perspective. So that you, you get two images that are um, from the same vantage point if you will. And you could do the same thing with a, a nice spacious cafeteria with lots of daylight and then uh, take that image and then try to replicate it from the same perspective, but showing no daylighting and a crowded condition. So I, I would recommend you start with some nice future shots or, or, or um, renderings. Are then, you talking... Yeah, go I, ahead. Know we, I know we pulled together um, a number of our TSKP's work um, along the way, and I, I'm not sure where that, whether it was a, a shared drive or what, um, but I do know that we have a few that we've, we've moved along. I don't know if we've had a chance to look at them to pinpoint perhaps some of those um, spaces that we've done in the past uh, to maybe match up against those or if there's something similar to those that we could take a look at and see um, that that may not be the exact uh, photo we want to show, but something similar to that. So if we could even look at that, you know, some of those photos perhaps and see anything that stands out to us uh, and then kind of and maybe help take it to the next step to say, okay, well, what do we need to do, you know, within the school or do we already have some of those um, available from that vantage point? I think that's Definitely. Yeah, so the shots that uh, were selected, and I can't remember where they're put, perhaps on some shared drive, are a very, very good starting point because they're shots of existing buildings, that new buildings that we've done that are good examples of those kinds of high school spaces. So let's revisit those and then, um, and then decide, you know, who should go take some new pictures, some new still pictures to try to create the existing shot to match that, that future image. Um, I did look at our server. We have a bunch of photos that we took when we went through the building and we got a bunch of photos from engineers as well. None of them really, I believe, are a good match to the future image. And that's, that's I think, what needs to be done. Here's, a, here's what the classroom could look like. Here's what you got. And, um, so I think that's, I think the next step is look at, look at the future shots. So um, Kara, do you want me to um, select some shots with you and maybe we can decide um, how to get the existing shots? Absolutely, you got it. Okay. And Kara, I can help out with that too. Excellent, thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Okay. Oh, and uh, just one more thought, if I may. Um, I think having Scott narrate the video is great. And perhaps he should also narrate the side-by-sides. Mm -hmm. And they could even be in the collection of his videos. Here's, here's the views of the existing classrooms and then you segue into, okay, what about the future? And those could be the Ken Burns style before and after shots. I think, I think having him do the narrative would be good. Okay. So our next, thank you everyone. Uh, the next item is newsletter update to the Farmington community. I think this is Kat. Sorry, Kat had to step away, but um, I know we did get the town newsletters out this week. Um, so if you haven't received it yet, you should be receiving it by tomorrow. Um, and there was a little blurb about the project, so. 
Beth actually has it. <laughs> yes, right before this meeting, my husband brought in the mail, but I didn't open it yet, so. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. I don't know, is this the best way to do this? I think the big unveiling. Long pause. So we have the center when it's backwards. Yeah, but it's a good quarter page size update. You know, I was thinking when we were talking about this last night that all of the postcard and our newsletter for the schools and the town newsletter, maybe we should be archiving those on our website just because it's another communication tool that we've used and people can look back on them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We can definitely uh, make a spot on the website for that. That's a good idea. I mean, and I think the... that that would be a, a nice place that we could possibly put it into the calendar that we uh, we pulled up. So it would be filling that out and see that um, it has been communicated and that things are going out, you know, <coughs> often. My dog is making noise over here, so <laughs> I keep <laughs> muting. <laughs> so um, website updates from our FHS building committee website. So do we have anyone who is going to go? Oh. Yep. So Cara and I have been working, uh, we've been meeting every week to sort of tackle something new. Um, so this is our, I'll just go from the beginning on the home page. We didn't really change too much. We had a few minor uh, formatting changes but the landing page still pretty much looks the same. Um, committees and meetings, we changed up a little bit. Um, so it used to look like this, where we had just the upcoming meeting schedules. Um, so the new one is set up a little bit different. We have some of the building committee information, the, the flow chart, building process, charge, et cetera. Um, we have the next upcoming meeting, which I haven't had a chance to change yet. Um, but this is sort of, it has the agenda, the Zoom link, et cetera. And then we have the most recent past two meetings with the agenda minutes, chair report, meeting video. And then uh, you can click to get a, a full view of all the past meetings. Um, so I did add last night's up here, uh, minutes st still aren't ready, so they're not up there, but uh, we have sort of a picture from the meeting uh, the night before. And uh, I've only gotten back to May 13th this, this far, but as I have more time, I'll continue to add the older meetings. Um, we also added this calendar of events. Um, we're hoping to make it look a little more colorful. Um, but we're working with uh, Lindsay at CSG and hopefully she'll be able to help us out with that. Um, so right now this is our October meetings and just click and do it for Zoom info. And uh, for the calendar of events, we're thinking anything that sort of relates to the building committee we'll throw on here. So if there's an important Board of Ed meeting that has relevant info, we'll throw that on here. Any town council meetings, et cetera. Um, FAQ and resources. Um, so it used to look the old resource page. Looked like this. So it's just a lot of scrolling and a lot of info. So we tried to consolidate a little bit of it. And it's actually this one right here. So we added the FAQ here. So you just click into this to go to the separate FAQ page. But um, we actually, we made this uh, graphic interactive. So uh, you can click on this and it'll bring you to the PDF and you can click within the PDF to get the different resources. So if you wanna look at the conceptual options, got your maintain, renovate, new building. It's got the presentations from qa &M, TSKP, and the meeting video. And then all the information that was before the 2019 uh, committee, we try to consolidate that and make them into their own pages. 
So when you click into this, if you're looking at the community survey ad hoc committee, got their charge minutes, survey results, and their presentations. And at the bottom, we've got their committee members. And I think we're gonna make this its own button and put it up at the top of this stuff too. Um, and we are looking at trying to, uh, we're working with Lindsay to see if we can touch up some of the aesthetics and you know try to make the button sizes all the same size. Right now they're just based on the length of text. But if we can figure that out, we'll try to do that as well. Um, Car, did you want to talk about the summary of needs? Uh, sure, I will. I just to also put on um, just back to the page you were just on. Uh, the other thing is, is we know it's a it's a click into a click. Uh, when we talked to Lindsay the other day, um, the idea would be to make it more searchable is that we would build it out into the website itself. So it wasn't a link into a PDF to do that. Um, it's kind of a long item that once we get everything else kind of going and we can populate it, then we'll, we'll work towards when we have some time to, to build that out as well. So um, summary of needs. Um, do you want to show what it used to look like? Yeah. Let's go back here. And, and please keep in mind, this is just a first brush at kind of pulling it together. I'm, I'm playing with it still a whole bunch, um, but I, I think that it, it tightens it up a whole bunch. And I think that this is a great place where we might be able to put some of those videos broken up um, into these individual pages as we look at the different uh, summary of needs um, sections. So what it used to look like. Yeah. And where we are now. Clicking, I, I forget what the corners were, what, what that was referred to as, but I wanted to put that there. Um, and then we've, we've taken everybody's videos and made them a little bit smaller um, to kind of reduce the wow factor um, on screen. But each of these link into a new page and each page is um, definitely um, a little bit different. So in here, I think that there are ways that we can talk about. I loved a lot of the things uh, that we was said in the video and I think that we can use some of that verbiage within some of these pages. And so I think that that's something that we can continue to look at or, you know, try and modify some of that, um, you know, uh, voiceover. Um, maybe some of those things need to come into here. And again, uh, some of those things can perhaps video or the side by side. So that was one thing I, I do want to touch on. Side by side wise, we, we did discuss that a little bit. And I think we want to throw it out to the committee. I think maybe first it's kind of getting to a place of identifying and seeing what we have and then how does it fit onto the website whether it gets broken up whether it's its own you know substantial um, navigation bar page uh, is something to also consider. Hey Cara this is Ellen. The, um, the only thing I would say about that is the summary of needs is pretty embedded in the website and I, I probably would be interested in any new videos especially side by sites for them to be um, very accessible, right? Right in the beginning of the website, um, really putting them front and center. Right, so we, we looked at that and, and again, that could be exactly it. It may not be within the summary of needs, maybe it's broken up into the summary of needs, but some of the, you know, the longer overarching is goes into the front um, navigation, the very first navigation where you've got calendar, it might be, you know, that video is right there on top. Uh, there's also a section at the bottom of the homepage that outlines the most current, um, yeah. So here, latest announcements and press. Um, so we actually created this and I know we had talked about the cost analysis um, that we needed to work on getting um, up on the website. And, uh, and this may perhaps be a place where we'll have five icons. Um, and, and that could be, you know, another place to hold it. So I agree with you. I think that a lot of that should be front and center um, and where and how we talk about that. And, and I don't think it's um, a bad thing to have it uh, repeat 
within some of the, the smaller pages. I think that's, I think you're absolutely right. So. Um, so summary of needs and then, so that's, so again, we're still kind of working through some of those. We're still trying to graphically represent the pages consistently and all of that kind of stuff. But I think from just a first look, if anyone's even looking at this now, um, it's significantly different. And I don't think that those little um, nuances are going to hurt us rolling this out now as it is um, with some of these changes. Does anybody have any objections to that? We've kept the, the other pages in case we want to resort back to them, um, but we were thinking that maybe that we're, we're in a good place to kind of just keep moving forward with it. I'm in support of that. Um, yeah, and my, my comment is also, um, you have to keep the website fresh because um, staleness implies there's no activity. And um, so I think, you know, having a way to add material or edit material going forward, uh, I think is, is great. I think it's come a long way from the original. Great, so we're, we're still moving, like I said, along with a lot of different small pieces, um, but I think that I agree. I think we've we've come a long way from Lindsay being able to just get that home page set for us and, and giving us a kind of direction for look and feel as well. So uh, thank you to Lindsay and CSG for that as well. And, and and so you know the other thing is is if and when you have a chance and you want to take a look at it, feel free. It's live. Um, make some notes and send them our way so that when we do meet each week, we are addressing some of those things and we can. Um, and keep it moving and, and, like you said, Richard, just keep it fresh. Um, Evan or Car, is it easy for us to get um, stats on number of hits and things? Just curious if it's like a super, super easy thing for us to do. So I haven't played with any of that. Uh, Squarespace does uh, have a um, they have kind of a, a back end, something like that. I know Google uh, also has their own. We haven't looked at that, but I think absolutely we should look at that um, for sure. I do think that it is already tracking some things um, just by default, uh, but we I haven't looked at that at all. Yeah, I mean, just something to consider. I don't think we need to do it right now by any means, but I think something to kind of keep it on the radar and then it can also help us uh, determine where information should go. Uh, so if we have a page that is visited frequently right. um, versus something else, so it could be that meeting page that people want to go to every time, that that could be a good place for us to highlight information if we need to, depending on number of hits and, and just traffic patterns. No, we'll definitely look into that. Yeah, and like I said, Devin, you guys are doing so much right now, I wouldn't, it's not, you know, I think just as we move forward and we're really starting to ramp up communications, I think it might help us. And then I know that this is one of those things that will never really be done, but I think when it's at the point that you're pretty set in sharing this, maybe we could talk about ways that we can just kind of do a notice to people to encourage them to get information, whether it's through the PTOs, the schools, Friday folders, maybe just a little highlight that it's an updated website and they can turn here for information, get, drive I, I some that, traffic. I think that's a great idea. Um, and that was one of our hopes for the calendar, especially, is so that we could have PTO in there. We could have, I mean, everything that's going on in town that would be related to the kids in some ways. So maybe it's driving more traffic that they know if there's a conflict between some different meetings or perhaps um, that they can see it all in, in one place. And I don't think it's too hard to just to load them in if we've got, you know, people pushing those um, meetings towards us to be able to have some of that in here as well. I think Matt Roth would be a good back to. I think Matt would be a good resource to just talk about the calendar of events and mm -hmm. how we link our calendar of events to this one or 
Um, so I would definitely uh, speak with Matt about that. I really like so many of the updates. I think it's uh, more attractive and uh, easier to kind of navigate. I, I do wonder when Richard talked about new content, many school districts have uh, news at the bottom of their website and it changes regularly, but you can kind of go through those news items. Um, and so something like that, but maybe with, uh, you know, there's a new member on the committee and then you have Wendy there and you know what I mean? Like things like that, that keep people interested, like, oh, it's still moving. It's things are going on. So I just wonder, uh, you know, we have a, the chair report um, goes there and, you know, it's just scrolling um, <coughs> news. Just wonder about that. <laughs> Yeah, we, I, think that's a, I think that's a good point, and I think that maybe perhaps when we meet every two weeks or so, we can talk about uh, what we want to show and then respond accordingly. It's not too hard to do some of that, but, you know, so we have an opportunity to say, you know, yes, we do want to post that or no, we want to hold off on that. Um, I think that's a wonderful idea. And then um, do we want it at the bottom or do we want some of that at the top? Mm -hmm. You know, is, is that, you know... In speaking to Fresh, if you're hitting the home page, and that's typically where people are going, you know, do we want to see some of that? You know, we can do carousels, we can do some of those things uh, as well along the top. Well, that's not mine. <laughs> um, and it even could be we could ask for quotes. We could ask CJ, our town council chair, you know, write write something and we'll put it up in the news or Ellen as our board chair. So there, we could have parents uh, saying different things. I just, you know, it could really be something that catches uh, community members eye because they're people that are familiar to them and what are they saying about the project? So it, I think there's just so many possibilities with that. I, I I have a question. I remember somehow or ways back where we talked about doing those videos of from, you know, having those quotes and things like that, right? So this could be, um, and I know that we talked about uh, the students feeling really passionate about telling their story and things like that. Um, is there any conversation around that, that the students can just, po you know, send us, you know, a selfie video that we could perhaps do something like that and post those if you wanted to be on and, and why it matters to you. Is that something that we could possibly do? I don't know if, you know, and if we wanted to keep it fresh, we could have a designated spot. You know, it might just drive people to go look at, you know, see their video on it too. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. an option. Well, I think Scott talked about this, you know, I think before, right before um, we went into quarantine about it's the popularity of the man on the street, whether it's a student or a community member or elected official or, and having a spot and, um, it's fresh, you know, it's something we can reload and archive. And um, I think that's a great idea. I don't know how easy it is because I'm not very technologically gifted, but um, <laughs> I'm getting it, It's super easy to load a video. I think trying to keep it fresh and relevant, having people send them to us as opposed to us managing the video itself is going to, is would help keep it moving. So if that's something that people are willing to do is take their own selfie or have someone, you know, on their, on their camera or on their iPhone, um, take that video and do something like that and have them sent in. We can screen them first, obviously, and then it's, it's super easy just to upload them into that. I wonder if we could figure out, well, they could tell us how they do it at FHS for the 905 News. Right. They do that all the time. Right. But we can definitely um, talk to Matt and Russ and try to coordinate something where we, and, and I know Scott has done this where he'll send something out and then people will send things back. So we can definitely figure out how to do it. And then I really like the idea of having new content regularly going up with um, people kind of talking about the project and what they hope uh, the project will bring to the community and how will it, it will enrich uh, students' educational experiences. So I think that's a really nice idea. 
and then 30 seconds. Yeah. Right. I think it would be great to give people a time maximum or, or range. And I'm almost envisioning somewhere on the website, like where you have the latest announcements and press where it's people are talking about the project or the FHS project, dot, dot, dot. And then it's just this like uh, film strip or something of the thumbnails of people in their videos. And then if we work on different constituencies, right? So we all have our networks, like Scott can try to get the kids, the students at the high school to send in videos and we can ask parents and elected officials and other people in town. So we get a good mix and try to keep that going. I actually have to step out in a few minutes, but I just wanted to um, just to give a little perspective. I know I joined to this committee later, so I had to actually go onto the website to kind of keep myself caught up. But um, I'll tell you, the first thing I was looking for was pictures. So that would be something I would highly recommend. I know we talked about doing perhaps a carousel in the beginning or the side by side. And I know when I was like initially doing my research, I was actually looking for that. So don't know if that's something um, I can just kind of bring to the table someone who wasn't really in like involved through the process coming in later and coming in as an outside view. So um, just wondering if that would be something we can do. And as for videos, don't know if you want to follow like TikTok and make it quick and simple, but for some reason, TikTok grabs everybody's attention, especially the younger generation. So just some recommendations. Excellent. So anything else on this agenda item? I think it, we go right into other updates. So do we have any other updates for the committee? I think the only other big one, Kathy, would be from our meeting this morning uh, with Tall Timbers, is to kind of give everybody an update on that. Um, and, you know, the fact that we even met with Tall Timbers this morning as our first kind of point of engagement uh, with Ira uh, to get his perspective and really talk about next steps and types of communication and, and get his thoughts. So, um, you know, I think he was, he provided a really good perspective for us on overall timing and, you know, us being sensitive around the type of messaging that we should be giving and, and you know, being really family centric, I think was some wording that really kind of resonated with all of us this morning is that, you know, we really need to think about that in our messaging um, and, and be aware of obviously all the impacts that are happening around us, such as the election and um, kind of, you know, daily impact to, to everybody's lives. So I think he gave us some perspective on, on planning and what direction we need to go in. And uh, I think he's gonna be super helpful for us uh, as far as really getting, getting some guidance around um, how to reach out to the community, how to get a level set on where they feel, how to gauge um, kind of some, some trigger points around this project and what that means to them and how that translates back to us as far as communication is concerned. So I don't know anybody who was there this morning if you wanna provide any other feedback on that right now. I, I was at the meeting this morning and I found it very, very helpful. I found Ira to be very clear mm -hmm. about um, the timing. Uh, for me, that was good to hear. Uh, yeah. he, 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 what he, what he said is that people are exhausted right now with the COVID issues, financial concerns, um, their jobs, and now the election. And it's just, we're just inundated with this stuff. It's a bad time right now to be talking about um, high school stuff. And he recommended waiting for the beginning of the year when hopefully we're past the election, we have a better handle on town finances um, and uh, people are feeling up more optimistic. So I, I found that very, very helpful. Yeah, I agree. I think he brought a new, fresh perspective to our um, to our group, and um, certainly opened uh, you know our eyes to a few, to a few different uh, views.
Thank you all for sharing that because I wasn't at the meeting, but it almost seems like there has been sort of a pause. I'm going to call it a fog, but, um, and it just, to me, that, that makes a lot of sense um, that we start after the new year, um, start fresh. And uh, I, I'm definitely on board with that. Well, I'm sure it's not quick enough for all of us. I, I, um, we probably don't have a choice at this point. So. Well, Ellen, we did talk a little bit about preparing for that first. So there's some work to be done to get us to that point. So um, I think that that's, you know, as we gear up and um, uh, plan and prepare that we, that as we get to that first of the year, it's sort of, I think even Richard, you, you know, you had said it new year and then spring, you know, is, is here, right? There's some new fresh uh, feelings about 2021 and getting ready to 2020 and, and all of that making sense as we, um, you know, prepare our communications at, to, to sort of hit right around the first of the year. Totally agree. Anyone wants to pop a cork? <laughs> right there. <laughs> We will. I, I totally agree. We'll, we'll each take a space. And... <laughs> so uh, is Ira officially on board now? I think he is in a planning capacity. So, I mean, we will not be engaging him fully until, you know, we're ready to actually start executing. But I think in a planning capacity and preparing us for that, um, that January communication, um, I would say yes. Okay, so to Mark's point, I believe I heard him this morning say that he would like to receive as much information as he can mm -hmm. so that he could start um, getting familiar with the project and maybe starting to outline what happens in January. I think I heard him say that. So I'm more than willing to share with him whether, whatever information I have, but um, it, it would be great if he were now the collector of that and the distiller of that. And again, with fresh eyes, try to formulate the newsletter or whatever he's pulling together for the beginning of the year. Yes, he wanted to us to forward on as much as we could to him. I agree with that, Richard, to, to really start thinking about and then look re-looking at the original plan he had put to together when we were discussing this prior to um, the pause to see what else we need to add and think about so that we're, you know, really covering all our bases now. So any other updates? Okay, so our next agenda item is to review the upcoming meetings of the communication subcommittee. I think this was just to um, discuss kind of our, our meeting schedule and our meeting time. As you're aware, this is a new time that we're meeting and, and we appreciate everybody's flexibility for this. Um, we're open to alternating times, whether it's a meeting, morning meeting, one month, uh, an afternoon meeting, just to be considerate and inclusive of everybody's schedule. Um, so just wanted to open that up for discussion about um, if, if people are open to that, alternating, um, we are meeting the day after our building committee meeting, so I think that would remain the same, but, but the time we're open to some flexibility for, for alternating uh, morning, afternoon meetings to, to accommodate everybody. So... And <laughs> I'm all for going with the majority. This isn't the greatest time for me, but it's certainly doable and I have the flexibility. And if everyone at home cooperates or I can leave when we get to that point, it's fine. Um, but I am concerned about Scott because I think he, just having him here, we've seen already where we know we need to back and forth and check with him and get his input. And so much of this is you know, obviously is the high school principal. I think yeah. he's a big player in this. So if four o'clock with things going on after school is really not doable for him, I just have a concern about that. But um, I know there's communication between Kathy and Scott, certainly, and you know we'll get it done. But that's, that's my biggest concern at this point. 
very valid point. So we'll we'll take that into consideration as well and, and work with Scott on, on his schedule. Hi, this is Alan. I, I, I guess I agree with Beth. This this time is not the best for I would think for this group. Um, that everyone in this group has a, a, a very full schedule. If we are um, I uh, I thought it has been working out well the last along, uh, 18 months that these meetings have worked out well in the morning. Um, as far as, I'm not sure if there was a thought or I had heard to give um, the community a chance to attend. Four o'clock in the afternoon is not what I would call a good opportunity to extend this to the community. And I think that this hour um, in the afternoon is, I mean, Scott's not here, but I don't know about you, Kathy, but as far as central office and administrators, parents, <clears throat> um, I don't think this is a very good hour. If we were going to um, uh, change the time, then I, I, unfortunately we'd probably have to add another night meeting. I'm not sure that this group uh, that's something that we need more of. So I guess i um, not trying to be difficult and I want to take everyone to consideration, but I really, um, I really think that the, the morning hour sometime on the earlier part of the day is, has really worked for us. Oh, and you know, my other point, this was the other thing, um, as far as um, from what I can remember, participants in this meeting are mostly our community members from our advocacy groups. Mm -hmm. And I think that this, um, the hour we've always met at has worked well for them also. So, but I will go uh, with how the majority feels. Was this the best time on the um, survey? Yes. Yeah, of those that participated, this was uh, the most common denominator. I have to be honest, when I got the survey, I didn't really like any of the times, and I couldn't <laughs> submit it without punching a time. So one this, time. So it forces you to, yeah, select the time. This is a flawed survey. <laughs> yeah, true confessions. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it is important that we do, um, if, if it is alternating, if, if it is something that's going to, if that's going to help people, that's fine, that we alternate either between a morning meeting or an evening meeting, then if the four o'clock time frame doesn't make sense, that might be a good way for us to kind of bridge the gap here. We even could do, I don't know if this works with other people's schedule, um, it, to not add to our night meetings, but maybe meet prior to the building committee meeting, you know, on, on Wednesdays instead of we have 6.30, maybe we meet at 5.30 and, and work our way up to that building committee meeting. It just, just a thought um, if, if we're going to alternate and maybe, maybe that time period is a little bit better. Kathy, you think that would work for Scott? I think so because it's a night that we know we're out or virtual or whichever way um, the meeting uh, is structured. So I do think that that's what we try to do with board meetings. If we have subcommittee meetings, we try to do them at, you know, as much as possible before a board meeting. So I do like that idea. I also like the idea of alternating uh, every other month, I think that's um, also helpful. So, okay, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. Um, if we do an alternating and have the evening one be prior to our building meeting, and then we have an update to share. Yeah. Okay, so we can put, what we'll do is we will put together um, a schedule at least for the next couple of months with an alternating um, 
so our next one would be a morning meeting at the day and then and then the following month would be uh right before the building committee meeting so what we'll do is we'll put together a schedule um we'll email it to this group and then we'll have it on the calendar or the agenda to approve at our next meeting sounds good that's my talk <laughs> I think that's I think that's it. Pat, do you want to do a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Me? So motion to adjourn, I'll try to do it really fast. Yeah. So moved. Second. I see Ellen. <laughs> All right, so we're adjourning at 514. Thank, Thank you everyone. everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.